Hello everyone and welcome to this video about the quadrature of the parabola. In this work, Archimedes proved a very cute original result, not once but twice over. Clearly we need to start with what this word quadrature means, because it's hardly an everyday word. Literally it's converting into a square. And the most famous problem of this type is to take a given circle and construct a square with the same area as the circle using only a straight edge and a pair of compasses. And nowadays we know that that's theoretically impossible. But for the Greeks, this was one of the great unsolved geometry problems. And because it was so difficult, mathematicians like Archimedes decided that they would turn their attention sideways a bit and also see if they could do quadrature of other shapes with curved boundaries. So quadrature of the parabola then, you take a cone and you slice through it in parallel to one of the edges of the cone. And then you look at this cut head on and by definition, what you end up with is a parabola. And within the parabola, we take a straight snip and cut a little bit off the corner, which we'll call the parabolic segment. And the question is simply, what's the area of such a shape? And Archimedes' answer is it's always proportional to a triangle that we can construct within this parabolic segment. We take the two um, ends of the cut as two of the corners, go to their midpoint, and then we proceed in parallel to the axis of symmetry of the parabola. Every parabola has an axis of symmetry. In this talk, we're just going to agree always to draw our parabolas so that their axis of symmetry is vertical. So we go to the midpoint M, we proceed straight up until we hit the parabola at B. That's the associate triangle. And Archimedes proves that the area of a parabolic segment, amazingly enough, is always four thirds of the area of its associate triangle. Incredibly elegant result, very typical of Archimedes to come up with something so neat. Now, at the heart of his proof is the idea of iteration. Each of the two sides of the associate triangle are also chords that snip off a little parabolic segment that will have its own associate triangle inside it. And we can therefore run the process again, as I've indicated with green triangles, and we can run the process again and so on and so forth forever. I've just done the, the blue triangles that come out of one of the two green triangles in the second step. And if you like, any associate triangle will therefore spawn two uh, child triangles. And Archimedes starts with finding an amazing relationship between the area of an associate triangle and the area of either of its child triangles. That result is that the parent triangle is always eight times as big as either of its child triangles. And to prove this, Archimedes makes use of some results from previous mathematicians who'd worked on parabolas. And he doesn't even prove all the results himself. So I'm going to do something a bit similar. I'm going to take a bit of a shortcut and use uh, actually some modern methods, which are a particularly fast way of demonstrating some of the key points that Archimedes' proof of this uh, amazingly neat relationship rests on. What we do is we take our parabola, which I put in green, and we take any old point on it, O, and we set up a coordinate system centered on O. And um, what we're going to do is have the y-axis parallel to the axis of symmetry of the parabola, because again, we agreed that we would always draw them with a vertical axis of symmetry. And so down to a scaling factor, this parabola will have an equation such as y equals x times k minus x for some k wherever the parabola crosses the x-axis again. We also need to draw the tangent line in at O, which I've drawn in red, and we can take the derivative and see that the gradient of that line is k, and therefore it has equation y equals kx. Now we then go directly down from O, so along the axis of symmetry, in parallel to the axis of symmetry, pick any old point A, which we'll say is, is lower A um, down from O, and we draw a chord in the parabola parallel to the tangent. And 
then that line will have the equation y equals kx minus a. So where it meets the parabola at p and q, we will have x times k minus x is equal to kx minus a. And that very simply boils down to x squared is equal to a. And this result allows us to see a number of important uh, properties of the parabola extremely quickly. So the first thing is that in terms of the x-coordinates, a is in the middle of p and q, because they have uh, root a and minus root a as their uh, x-coordinates. a has zero, so it's directly in the middle. So we have p a is equal to a q. Moreover, any chord which um, has its midpoint directly beneath O will be a chord a bit like PQ, which was drawn parallel to the tangent at O. Because if you think about any other chord emanating from P that has its midpoint on um, the line OA, the y-axis, then the other end of it would have to be directly beneath Q or directly above Q. And there are no other points on the parabola which are on the same x-coordinate as q. And lastly, we can actually say directly what a r and r q are, so we could calculate a q using Pythagoras theorem. And if we do so, we see that a q squared divided by a o is dependent on k, but it's not dependent on a. So it doesn't matter, once you've got your parabola, it doesn't matter which a you choose. This ratio, a q squared to a o, is always a constant. So let's go back to the diagram that we had before and try and work out this relationship between the red area and the green area. By the way that we defined associate triangles, we know that if we drop straight down from b, we will get to the midpoint of AC, and if we drop straight down from D, we will get to the midpoint of AB. Of course, we will also get to the midpoint of AM because we have some similar triangles going on, APX and ABM. So, in other words, we have that AX is a quarter of the way along AC. Right. Now we do a little bit of construction, so we draw in df, which is parallel to ac, and then we're going to consider the relationship of bfd and bma, which are two examples of what we saw in the last slide, where you go down some arbitrary distance from the centre of focus, b, and then go off to the side parallel to the tangent, right? Remember that because um, M is the midpoint of AC, it must be parallel to the tangent at B, and FD will be the same. So what we get is DF squared over BF is equal to AM squared over BM. That's the result from before. But now, because we've got this parallelogram, and we know that X is in the midpoint of AM, we can also make some equations that relate things to um, the length xm. And the use of this is that it will tell us the relationship between bf to bm. So you can see that bf is a quarter of the way down bm, and therefore dx, which is equal to fm because of the parallelogram, that must be three quarters of bm. Okay, now we also know that px because again, we've got those similar triangles, is a half of BM. And so this allows us to make a relationship between PD and PX. And at this point, we can put it all together and actually prove the result that we're aiming for. So the red triangle ABC is four times the area of AXB, because AX is a quarter of AC. And AXB in turn is twice as big as ADB, think about it, they have the shared side AB, and we just showed that PX is twice PD on uh, a straight line. So you can imagine if you drop perpendiculars from X and D to AB, then they would be in the ratio 2 to 1 as well. So that proves the result. The red triangle is eight times the size of ADB, and we can do exactly the same 
and um, we would end up with the same result for triangle BEC. This means that when we go back to this idea of iterating the process, each associate triangle spawns child triangles whose total area is a quarter of its own. So at the first stage, we have the area of ABC. And then at the second stage, we add on a quarter of that. At the um, next stage, we add on a quarter of that, so a sixteenth of um, the area of ABC, and so on. And Archimedes knew that this sum will get as close as you like to four thirds, meaning in particular that if you name any number less than four thirds, eventually this sequence, or within a finite number of steps, will pass that number that you just named. And because the parabolic segment goes around the outside of any such polygon, then we have that delta is greater than any area you could name, which is less than four thirds of the area of its associate triangle. It looks like we're homing in on the result now, but we do need also to check that this iterative process would really get as close as you like to filling up the entirety of the parabolic segment. We have to check that there's no little weird corner which never gets covered by the polygon, in which case the area of the parabolic segment would be a bit more. So does the iteration fill the segment? Yet again, Archimedes comes up with uh, a nice elegant demonstration of this. What we do is we take a, a parabolic segment and we construct a parallelogram. So what we've done, AC, if you remember, because of the way we looked at the midpoint M and then went along parallel to the parabola's axis of symmetry, we know that AC is parallel to the tangent at B. So we take a section of that tangent as the opposite side of the parallelogram, and then we take for the, um, for the other two sides lines that are parallel to the axis of symmetry. And clearly the area of ABC is a half of the area of the parallelogram, but the parallelogram also appears to completely encompass the parabolic segment. And I say it appears to, we need to be a bit careful here, not just say, well, the diagram makes it obvious. The point is that parabolas, just like the cones from which they're sliced, are convex, and that means they lie on exactly one side of their, of any particular tangent to them. So the parabola can't go above the line GH at any point. It can't have a wiggle up. Also, because of the basic property of parabolas that um, the horizontal distance squared divided by the vertical distance from the apex is, um, is fixed. That means that any line, um, vertical line, such as GA or HC, will cross the parabola in exactly one place. And therefore, we can't have any wiggling going outside the parallelogram across AG nor across HC. And so we can actually definitely say that the parabolic segment sits inside such a parallelogram. So we have that the associate triangle is more than half the area of its segment. And that means that the leftovers at each stage of that iterative process decrease by a factor of more than two. So if they start at one unit, then they're always going to end up in a series less than one, a half, a quarter, an eighth, and so on. And that series will eventually, within finite time, go below any positive number that you could care to mention. So we get the final piece of our jigsaw puzzle, if you like, that the difference between delta and four thirds of the area of the associate triangle. Well, that is less than delta minus any of those polygons formed using associate triangles. In other words, it's less than some leftovers at any particular stage. And we just showed that the total area of the leftovers will decrease below any positive area you could mention. So putting this together with the previous result, we see that there'd be a contradiction in saying that delta is either more than or less than four thirds of the area of its associate triangle. So I really feel that 
Archimedes um, did a great job <laughs> with this proof. It contains a number of surprisingly elegant uh, results, and he's come up with a series of quite cunning steps to get us along the way. If you've enjoyed it as much as I do, then do please like and share the video around, and also watch out for a follow-up, because I mentioned right at the start that Archimedes proved his result in quadrature of the parabola in two different ways. The first way that he came up with is a little bit more complicated than this one, and so that's why I'm going to treat it second, but I will do a follow-up video about it as well, so watch out for that. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching.